Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Guys, I wasn't going to post today. I really wasn't. I was going to let the other one stand. It's got enough hits, uh, but it's, it didn't do it. And the more you watch, the more that I uh, post. But when I heard about this, I had to get out the Drop Dead shirt. And uh, usually I flip the shirts inside out. I'm the guy in the black shirt with the long hair. Um, not today. Um, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to get a little bit of a personal show here. And I hope Mr. Beasley finds this show someday. MSNnews.com. Jury recommends death in Craigslist killing. Why did this make me immediately need to post today? Because this filthy son of a bitch killed one of my friends, that's why. A jury has recommended the death sentence for a self-styled preacher convicted of killing three down-and-out men lured by bogus Craigslist job offers. Akron, Ohio, what a preacher, give Christianity a rotten name. A jury on Wednesday recommended the death penalty for a self-styled street preacher convicted of killing three down-and-out men lured by bogus Craigslist offers. The way they, the, they wrote the paragraph twice in a row. MSN, what do you expect? The same jury that convicted Richard Beasley made its recommendation after hearing his mother and other witnesses who testified on his behalf. On his behalf... Victim's relatives hugged as the recommendation was announced. Beasley hung his head without moving, and his mother sobbed. Beasley, 53, was convicted of teaming up with a teenager in 2011 to lure men with offers of farmland jobs in southeast Ohio and to rob them. Three men were killed, and a fourth was wounded. that was wounded testified at Beasley's trial. Good for him, because if it wasn't for that man stepping up and finding these scum, then he might still be doing it. Uh, Jet Kern, whose 47-year-old son, Timothy Kern, who was a friend of mine, and I'll get to that in a minute, was killed, alternately cried and smiled over the jury's recommendation. They made the right decision, he, say, he said outside of court. They knew that they had in their hearts and what, they knew what they had in their heart and what they had to do. They did it for us. The jurors left without commenting. Um, Jack Kern, you have an invitation to the correct views. If anybody in my listening sphere here can do me a favor, uh, ask Mr. Jack Kern if he'd like to talk about this. Um, if he wouldn't, I definitely understand, but he is a welcome guest on this show. Um, Beasley's co-defendant was, was 16 at the times of the crime. <clears throat> was too young to face the death penalty. That is utter BS, by the way. I was 16 at one time, and I knew enough not to kill anyone. Brogan Rafferty, scum, was sentenced to life in prison without the chance of parole for his conviction last year. Good. Rot. In clothing arguments, both sides highlighted Rafferty's life sentence and con. Basically, what they tried to do is they tried to say, well, since the teenager's only getting life, why shouldn't Beasley get life? That's because Ohio has a ridiculous law that they cannot put a 16-year-old to death for killing three people. But there is no such law for those over the age of 18. That's a stupid argument. Of course he had to do it. He had no choice. Well, let me tell you what this piece of garbage did. And I'm going to get personal here for a second. So for those of you that watch the show, it's on. Um, I, I want this to find Beasley and Brogan. Can anybody in my sphere, once again, make sure this finds Beasley and Brogan? I, sooner or later, you know the Internet's going to be available in prisons uh, to some degree where they can limit it. And this will get to them. So here's what I'm going to do, because a lot of the specs on this I don't know. But I'm going to let you, Mr. Beasley, Mr. Brogan, I'm going to let you two scummy people into what Tim Kearns was like. Now, I don't know the, the other ones, but I'll let you know what Tim Kearns was like, okay? You rotten person. That way you can sit there and you can know exactly why you're where you are. Um, in the mid-90s, the industrial electronic music scene in Canton, Ohio, consisted of a band that I was in called Jaws of Victory, and no one! We were the only industrial band here forever! Right now, uh, Blight vs. Blight, Ugly Distant, there are a lot of them. But uh, when, when I started, no one. It was Jaws of Victory. Uh, later, we changed our name to Passing Time. Well, when we got booked at a club called Sadie Renee's in the uh, mid-90s, nobody knew who we were. And Tim didn't like industrial music a whole lot. 
we played there, and I'm not going to say, you know, I was his best friend, I hung out with him all the time. Sometimes when I first started there, Tim could be a little bit rude. But you know what? As time progressed, we got him into electronic music. Sometimes he would tell us about bands that he'd heard uh, that he really liked. And uh, we, we got a repertoire going. He got where you know, their fans knew who we were at the club, and we were there quite often. We still play there from time to time. Tim was the sound guy. Tim was the guy that if you gave him a joint, yeah, I said it. If you gave him a joint, he'd sound better than you ever sounded in your whole life. He was a, he was a guy, a good, friendly guy. And uh, the last time I had seen him, and this is where I am guessing, I am not going to assume anything, but I know that he had some personal problems, and I'll leave it at that. And he got out of the club scene and that, and was uh, last time I had seen him, I ran into him at Walmart, a store that I never, ever shop at, but I used to have a pet toad, and it ate worms, of course, and I ran out of worms, and I work midnights, where else are you going to get, when you get off at 3 in the morning, where are you going to get worms at? So for the sake of the toad, I went. And um, Tim was there, and he was telling me that he was getting his life back together. Um, he mentioned a couple things, but, you know, this isn't like, oh, they just killed some guy that was already going down the hill anyway. No, 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 no. Tim hit a bump in the road. Tim got over it, and Tim was looking to put his life back together again. He was a responsible person who had a problem, never hurt anybody, addressed it, and fixed it. And he was going to be a farmhand, Mr. Brogan, Mr. Beasley scum. He was going, I'm assuming, to be a farmhand. He was going to make some money on the farm. He was going to be far away from any temptations. He was going to work on restructuring his life and getting everything back together again. When I saw him, he was looking good. He was looking like he was going in the right direction. And he took the job that you scum had lied and offered. He took that job so that he could finish putting his life back together. And you know what? There's no doubt in my mind that he would have done it if you guys hadn't done what you did to him. And I hope this finds you, because that's the person that you took away. You took away somebody that was making bands sound good and giving people their chance to get up on stage and just an all-around good person to the bands in this area. And we know you, Beasley. We know you. And you better hope one of your cellmates isn't somebody that used to be a part of the local uh, electronic metal scene in Canton. You better hope they're not somebody that liked to go to City Renee's or that know who Mushroom Head was before anybody else in the country did. Yeah. You better hope none of those fans find you. You are scum, and I'm not happy that you're sentenced to death, because I'm not happy when anybody is sentenced to death. But I am pro-death uh, in terms of death penalty. Pro-death, that was an awful sentence. I am pro-death sentence. And let me tell you something, you piece of human filth. When you get yours, you're getting it for a reason. And if it ever has applied to anybody, it applies here. I have done things in my life that I have regretted. But you, my friends, are a piece of garbage. Rot! Rest in peace, Tim Kearns. I hope my peace has done you justice. Um, this is bbc.co.uk. I've decided just to go ahead and stick with scum for the rest of the show. It's the scum show in honor of Beasley. What was it? What that garbage his name before I never speak it again? Beasley and Brogan's scum show. Rottenness swine. Fukushima rat. You know, a rat like Breezley or Brogan. Fukushima rat linked to outage at Japan nuclear plant. Speaking of garbage, how about the people that run GE and TEPCO? How about those rotten people that brought death to us from their uh, nuclear meltdown? How about them? Yeah, you don't know what Fukushima is. Look up Fukushima. They were warned that this was going to happen, and they said, oh, a tsunami that big will never happen. They did this for the bottom line. GE did this to the world. And now they've got a setup where if a rat climbs in to an electrical fixture, the only electrical fixture they have that cools the already melted down fuel from melting down more is stopped by a rat. As uh, uh, Iori-san from uh, Fukushima Diary so elegantly put it, the entire northern hemisphere was almost lost due to a rat. A rat may have caused this week's power outage at Japan's tsunami heat hit excuse me, Fukushima nuclear power plant. It has since been confirmed. 
says the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which is GE. When you hear GE, think about radiated children with thyroid cancer, and they did it for the bottom line. The company suspects the rodent may have caused a short circuit in the switchboard triggering the power cut. We have deeply worried the public, you think, but the system has been restored, a TEPCO spokesperson, Maya Sayuki Ono, was quoted as saying by AFP News Agency. Two years ago, a massive quake triggered a tsunami. You all know that by now. Burn marks! All cooling systems were operational by Wednesday, TEPCO said. It said it found burn marks on the makeshift power switchboard at six inches, uh, about six inches up from the switchboard. The dead animal was nearby. The company released an image of the apparent rodent carcass inside the switchboard unit. So what you have here is a situation where the entire well-being of the Northern Hemisphere, our ability to be able to live on Earth to a very large degree, depends on the continued well-being and destructuring of these plants for about the next 10 years. It's going to take 30 years to take them all the way down. And the system we have up two years into it has one line going and a rat can make it stop. This is the face of nuclear power. These people are the kind of person that would take someone into the woods and shoot them, wouldn't they, Mr. Brogan and Beasley Scum? Um, I want to thank those who have shared my links. I want to give a shout out to Autism One. That was Sean's uh, choice for who he wanted it to go to. And uh, also I want to give out to the American Cancer Institute. I had someone want me to plug them. All right, my friends, Paul Joseph Watson, uh, speaking of scum and filth like Brogan and Beasley filth, yeah, I'm saying their name over and over again because I want someone in the prison system to say, hey, wait a minute, I heard that name before. You're the guy that shot the guy that was on the way up, who was putting his life back together. Maybe give you a freaking elbow sandwich for Sam. Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece demands Obama disarm Americans again. Oh, we should listen to him. Global Times, a newspaper described as an angry Chinese government mouthpiece, recently published an editorial in which it called for urgent gun control in the United States, the second Chinese Communist Party publication to do so within the last month. This is dated end of January, and I just couldn't ignore it. The newspaper's January 17 front page editorial entitled Political Inertia Hinders Gun Control Action state that there is clearly an urgent need for gun control in the U.S., lamenting that it will be impossible for the country to ban guns. Yeah, you're lamenting it. You're lamenting it because you have the guns over there, you little swine. And you know what? You can say how many kids they're allowed to have. And we have our guns, and you can't. Filth! Striking an authoritarian tone, the editorial notes how the difficulties in promoting gun control show that U.S. society lacks authorities willing and able to push them forward. That might be because we have guns! Presumably, if the United States were a one-party dictatorship like China, such reforms could be far easier to implement. Yeah, and maybe if we were more like China, there might be 1,000 dead pigs floating, floating down one of our major rivers. And if you think I'm lying, look it up. The editorial goes on, it says, to claim how different China is from the U.S. Well, uh, not as different as us over here would like and how the failure of gun control legislation has become an institutional defect of the United States. Never mind the fact that at the same time that the Newton massacre was going on, children were being knifed to death in a Chinese school. Because, you see, if you knife a child to death, it gets almost no coverage at all. But if you shoot a child to death, that is wrong. Oh, we should ban knives. Yeah, that was the point. Clearly, you're paying attention. The piece even uses the gun control debate in the United States as an example of why the power of China's ruling communist dictatorship should be weakened, arguing that China's social transition cannot be developed into a process of decreasing of authorities. No, no, not at all. I mean, you guys butcher so many people for the smallest infraction that, I mean, what's a few more, right? People? Mao himself, it says, once remarked that political power grows out of the barrel of a gun, an understanding that he ruthlessly put into action by disarming people who had no means to defend themselves against his genocide. And Mao 
Zaytung killed as many, well, I don't know as many, I'm going to squabble numbers here. He killed like Adolf Hitler did. He was garbage. Garbage. Do you get that? And we're doing the scum show. I've got one more bit of scum for you. Mike Adams, Natural News, no, he's not the scum. A multinational drug companies hold Greece hostage by denying shipments of medicine. Filthy, rotten, scummy, dirty people. In a classic example of an anti-free market collapse, 50 pharmaceutical companies are now halting supplies of drugs and medicines to the nation of Greece, causing severe shortages to over 200 popular pharmaceutical medicines there. Remember these names. Remember them. Because they are just as bad as Bo Brogan and Breezley, who I hope nobody messes with in prison. Pfizer, Roche, GlaxoSmithKline, Sanofi, and many others have all reportedly joined in the partial embargo out of a fear that the low-priced drugs sold to Greece would be intercepted and sold off to buyers in other countries where drug prices are kept artificially high due to Big Pharma's monopolistic practices. So it says, instead of lowering the prices of drugs in nearby countries in order to stem the flow of medicines from Greece, mega drug giants like GSK, remember the name, a company that has already pleaded guilty to multiple felony crimes in the USA, and there is a link to it, are reportedly limiting <clears throat> or in some cases halting shipments to Greece, causing a nationwide collapse of chemical medicine. People are standing in line for hours, it says, to get prescriptions filled. And when they learn that the drugs aren't available, there's a lot of screaming and shouting. Greek citizens are in a state of desperation and anger. We have reached a tragic point, says one pharmacist there. So let me, let me put this in layman's terms for you, what these scummy drug companies are doing. I'm gonna, nobody knows geography anymore, so I'm going to pretend that America is Greece. We are Greece, we are destitute, and we have no money whatsoever to pay anything, including that bitch Lagarde who wants her money so much. We have no money. And if I seem angry at this show and I'm swearing, you know what? I don't normally do that, but I am furious tonight. Um, oh, I couldn't wait to get on here. Beasley, Brogan, who are going to get a boot party in prison. Um, listen to me. America's destitute, right? We're Greece. These drug companies, which drug companies? Oh, I don't mind telling you. Pfizer, Rush, GlaxoSmithKline, Sanofi. They're saying we're not going to give any drugs to America because America can't afford to pay more than $5 a pill. Or we sell that pill for $15 a pill in Canada. And if we sell it to the Americans, some of them are going to take those pills and sell them to the Canadians. And we're going to be losing money in Canada. So the best thing that we can do is to let Americans die by not sending them anything at all so that our bottom line is okay. So that we can sell them for $15 a pill to Canada. That is your scum show! That is your garbage filth report! And next time, you know what, I'm going to have to... Well, there isn't going to be a next time. How many times do you have to do a show like this? I am furious, people. Do me a favor. Don't kill those two swines that are in prison. I'm not calling for that. I want you to always let them know why they're there. I want you to harass them. I want you to make it so that they have no kind of life at all. Because there was someone who was trying to put their life together and they got it destroyed. Just like GE has brought death to our world. Just like these major drug companies want to take drugs off of people that need them just because they've been leached dry and have nothing more to give so you might as well let them die. Just like Mao Zedong, just like the leaders of China that want to take our guns so the genocidal regime, regimes can take over us at will. And don't be surprised if it's them, because that's one of the reasons Japan didn't invade us in World War II, was because we were armed. And these filth want to take them away from us. Yeah. Are you mad? If you can listen to this show and not be mad, there's something wrong with you. You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Please go to the Media Speaks, look at the work of D. Lake, Court, and Kyle. God bless, friends. Please donate if you can. All money goes to a better show.